What's up, VC? Alright, so, I it's been so long since I did a video. It's been like two months. Uh, a few reasons for that. Uh, got a job. First job ever. Really happy. Uh, then my computer died, and I had to wait about two weeks computer list to get a new one. And aside from that, I just haven't bought many records. I bought, in the span of these past two days, I bought five records, and I'm going to show about ten. So, this is the reason I'm making another video. It's been a while. So let me just jump into it. First one was actually quite a while ago. I was going to the store to buy a friend's birthday gift. I was going to Amoeba because I saw they had a copy of Black Moth Super Rainbow's Drippers EP. Really, really reasonable low price. $30 for that EP is good. It was one of the hand numbered versions. There was only 250 out of those. And I believe a thousand made. Saw another record while I was there and I had to get it. This cost me $25. Limited to 500 copies. It's Boris versus Doom Riders. Long hair and tights. It's a split live album, red vinyl. Unfortunately, not one of the versions with a um, what was it? With a stencil. So it came with that. It old. Um, pretty good album. I I hadn't heard it before I bought it, but I'm really into Boris and I want everything they put out. So I decided to pick that up. Do not regret buying it. Uh. If you're interested in this record, if you're a Boris fan, they might still have it up. They put up a copy of this on Amoeba.com for $30. It's the yellow version. That's still cheaper than I see it on Discogs or eBay. I would hit that up. Uh, after that, my birthday was October 21st. And along with my watch and like five different watch straps. It's just a little Timex watch and like five different straps. But I've been needing a watch forever. I got that, and I got a record from my girlfriend for my birthday. She got me a copy of Tom Waits' Mule Variation. She knows I'm a big Tom Waits fan, and she picked a record at random that she knew I didn't have. She picked a good one. So she ordered it off Amazon, and surprisingly, it, it's an original pressing. And so that's really cool. It's a 1999 one, not the 2010 reissue. I don't know how they still had sealed copies lying around, and it was apparently apparently not too expensive. Not at all. And this sounds great. Mule Variations is really good on this album. And another record I just got as a joke, because me and a friend, Brad, uh, who I have on friend from Tumblr, who also collects records, we found this and we were just laughing about it forever. There's a picture disc with Shrek's face on it. It's uh, by the Counting Crows. It's accidentally in love with the, um, I don't even know what the B-sides are. American Girls, and If I Could Give All My Love, and Manuel is Dead. Those are the B-sides. B-side is the Shrek 2, like, movie poster on a picture disc. But come on, it's Shrek's face. He had to import this from Japan and get it here, but he got me up for my birthday and I think it's hilarious. Second picture disc ever. This one, I saw it was marked as used on Amoeba.com. It cost me $6, and it came sealed. It said black vinyl on the website. This is Boris and Ian Asbury's DXI collaboration. Really good. It's um, three uh, songs with Ian Asbury singing. He's the lead singer of The Cult. And Boris playing, and then the fourth track is uh, Wada, the female guitarist of Boris, singing vocals to a, a uh, cover of a cult song. Really cool inner sleeve, and it said it was on black vinyl, but it's actually one of the limited pink vinyl copies. It doesn't look pink on here, but it's like a reddish pink. And also, what it came with was, I can't show you because it's hanging on my wall, but it came with a poster, which... From looking it up on Discogs, that was exclusive to Southern Lord mail order copies. So this was a sealed copy that came on pink vinyl with a poster for six dollars. Great, great find. I should put up all my posters. Let me see if I can show. Uh, you can see behind me hanging my poster from Boris Feedbacker. And to the side of it says the DXI poster. Okay, so my others. I have a Fleet Foxes Helplessness Blues poster. I have a Fall of Ephrafa poster from my Alsta album, and I have an Of Montreal Hissing Fauna poster. I've been hanging my posters. I put pins in them. I don't care. They're my posters. Next up, uh, saw this on eBay. 
I was at work just browsing eBay because I have a lot of spare time. And I ordered this, and I'm a little upset because I opened the package, and you know, normally you expect to find a record in a plastic outer, hopefully with the records taken out of the sleeve, bubble wrap around it in a mailer. That's ideal. Now I opened the mailer, and it's sitting there, no plastic around it, no bubble wrap, just in a mailer, dry. Split seams on the top, split seams inside. Records in good shape though, this is Boris Pink, original first pressing on icy pink vinyl, I believe they called it. Or maybe that was a retouch, they called it icy pink. Either way, pink vinyl, inside is all pink, like inside here is pink. The date hold is a really cool design. It doesn't sound very good, and from talking to other people, they have the same issue. This is just not a good sounding record. It sounds dirty. So, I don't know. I'll still listen to it because the track listing is great on this. If you've only heard the CD, you know, the CD starts with Farewell and then goes into Pink. This starts with Pink and puts Farewell next to Last, which I think is great. Because that was always a weird start to me. There's a lot of ex also extended track times. So after that, um, that was at the point where my laptop died. And my first paycheck from work went entirely into the end a little more. I had to get some money from my mom, help out, get this laptop. I wanted to get something good. I spent a good amount of money on this. I'm waiting, uh, God knows how long, probably, you know, till I die for a $50 mail-in rebate. That'll be just a nice surprise in the mail. I'll probably go buy some when I get it. Oh, no. So then I got my paycheck yesterday. And I, I passed by Hot Topic when a friend was visiting this past weekend from Bakersfield, and we went record shopping, and then we went to the mall, and then when we were at the mall, we, he went to Hot Topic, and I noticed they had Beatles remasters. They had Revolver, Sgt. Pepper's, and Abbey Road. They had a deal going, buy one, get one 50% off entire store. So I looked at the prices, $22 for a record. So that meant for I could get two for 33 and that's a good price for these. So I picked up Revolver, which sounds great to me. People have been complaining about the remasters. Some people have been saying they're great. I think they're great. It sounds perfect to me. I'm really happy because, honestly, I don't like buying used, like what happened with that Boris Pink record. Too many problems. I like knowing I'm the first person to touch a record, first person to use it. So I'm happy to have these new reissues. Next up, I haven't even opened this. I'm going to listen to it after I do this video. I also bought Sgt. Peppers. I left Abbey Road. I'll probably get it eventually. Then after work today, I went back to Amoeba. I went, when I went on Sunday with my friend, uh, I always check the back wall where they put the expensive records. And when I go home, I look them up to see what they're worth. I never really do anything about it. I just check just because I'm curious, just see how they do pricing. Sometimes they price really low, sometimes really high. And I noticed they had some Mobile Fidelic Sound Lab recordings of Beatles records. Um, they had two. They had one was Abbey Road. They wanted fifty for a sealed Abbey Road. Eh, it's a little high. I and honestly, I'll just buy the reissue. And the one I bought, I bought entirely to resell for a much higher price. Call me collector scum. I'll call myself the student who needs money to fund his expensive hobbies. They had a Mobile Fidelity Sound Labs recording of Yellow Submarine, and except for a slight corner bump, bump here and a little bend up here, perfect condition, record is flawless. I looked up this up on eBay when I went home. There, were co there was a sealed copy that sold for $260. Um, another sealed sold for $140. One sold for like $180 when it was opened. So it sells for very high. I bought this for $40. I bought it entirely to resell it. I don't care about Yellow Submarine at all, reselling it so hard. And I bought two more records today as well. I bought this, an original pressing of Tom Waits's Foreign Affairs, paid $10, records in great shape, looks unplayed, sleeve is a little messy, but it's a record from the 80s, what do you expect? And another I was really excited to find, an original copy of Tom Waits's Big Time, this cost me $7.99, Record has one scratch I'm a little worried about to play it. Might bent, might, might get messed up. Sleeves a little, eh, it's a little bad. You can't really see it in the video, but 
It's got some ring wear. It's a little messy up in the top left corner. But for $8, I can't complain for an original copy. I almost bought a Direct Metal Master of it for $40, so I'll take this. And then the final thing I have is what I'm really upset about. I ordered online. I went on eBay while I was at work, and I saw an auction. The auction title said, Hilmar Orn Hilmarsson and Sigur Rós, Angels of the Universe soundtrack, new LP UK import, and I bought it. $9.70 free shipping by now. I'm like, I don't know, maybe they messed up and did it. No, I got a CD, dual case CD, and to return it, I'd have to pay return shipping to Belgium, not worth my $10 back. So I'm keeping it. It's a Cigarro CD. It's not exactly that great of an album. I just wanted the record because I'm trying to collect everything they've done. Whatever. But yeah, that's my update. So thanks for watching.